I'm Kim Whitley. I'm Sherry Shepard. And uh, welcome to Two Funny Mamas. I know you said that. Yes, we did. It's going to be one of those days. It's going to be one of those days. We're shoot- you know, we've been shooting our podcast at nighttime. Oh. And it's pre-Valentine's Day. It's uh, February 13th. Uh, thank you. This is for me. Yeah, but I gave you a whole stack of papers. They're right here. Oh. Can't, it's, okay. It's so many. You know, it's this show is so unstructured. And we thank you for sticking with us. And uh, sometimes... We have days where we don't even have anything to talk about, where we just meander and we find something. That's every time. That's every time. This time we actually do have stuff to talk about. Oh, like really? I really, yeah, I want to get to I want to get to stuff. There's a lot of stuff that has been going on. But it's pre Valentine's night. Kim has if Kim is give her a little grace today because she's everything has been catching up with her because she booked some jobs, which is really great. She did a pilot. Can I say what it was for? She did a pilot for B E T. And uh, it was her and another comedian, Mm. uh, actress, Jackie Fabulous, who you may have seen on America's Got Talent. She was one of the finalists. And so they're doing a pop culture show on BET. And it's a pilot, so they have to try to sell this. And we'll see if BET picks it up. I hope so. So this literally was Kim working. She had to do Daily Pop. So she gets up at 3 in the morning or 4 in the morning, goes to Daily Pop. She has got to give that her all. Then she went straight to BET and worked for another 12, 15 hours doing the pilot because you got to do different takes. You got to change clothes. You got to do stuff over and over again. It's technical difficulties. So it's a long time. Mm -hmm. Then she came home. She had to finish up stuff for Joshua, his school. Then this morning early, she had to get up and get her makeup done because she was on Oprah's. It was the streaming show, right? With Oprah about living your best life. It was Sierra, it was James Corden, it was Jennifer Gardner, and Kim Whitley was also a special <laughs> guest. And it was Oprah, and it was huge. So Kim had to also mentally get prepared for that because the one thing, if you've ever met Oprah or have been in any kind of contact with Oprah, right. you cannot be unprepared oh, yeah. for a meeting or an interview with Oprah. She can tell. So well, She ain't got time. If you knew about this ahead of time, she's giving you an opportunity to speak. You better use that moment to speak to her millions and billions of followers. Exactly. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And yeah. um, I'm drinking this pressed juice. And, and I'm drinking coffee. You're drinking at coffee night. to stay up. I know, because because stay up. Kim is literally falling asleep in this podcast. But you know, being in front of Oprah, you <laughs> have to be prepared. So Kim had to prepare what she was going to say and where she wanted to go. So that was this. And then uh, her assistant and our friend Andre had a surprise for her. I had a surprise. I'm going to let you take it. Okay. Well, um, um, okay. I think I'm going to have to take (laughs) over. (laughs) Oh my God. Uh, uh, Andre Siobhan. Oh boy. I just want people to know when they go, Sherry, why you always talking? You be cutting Kim off because this will happen. Her, she just, oh God. While she's trying to remember her Valentine's Day surprise. So this is what happened. Siobhan comes and says... Siobhan is your assistant. Yes, Siobhan... Your road manager. Road manager. Siobhan... Yeah, Andre, too. Siobhan... I'm delirious, ain't I? Yeah, you are delirious. delirious. So Siobhan... Do do I need to find out how those lips look so great today? Like, do we need to get into that? Like, my gosh. On a whole different... We got to stay on the train, Chris. Sorry, my mistake. You gonna take us? We got a scoot in here. You gonna okay. take us on a meandering path, and we ain't gonna get back to it. Come okay. sit with me, Andre. So um, we are gonna let Andre. Ryan, no. <laughs> let's take, there's another frame down at the bottom for okay, just a Andre's single shot. Let's change to that. Yeah, take the line off. Take oh, the we're line on off. It. We are Chris. on it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Andre, we, damage oh, do you want to restart the whole show? Well, you've only talked for like two and a half minutes. It's not that dramatic. No, but, but it was no what we said. Right, here we go. Three, two, one. You're back. Wait, wait. You got to wait, Andre, uh, Chris, because Andre's scarfing down some bamboo, and he's not in frame. And you have to stay in the frame, Andre. Okay. Everybody, okay. stop chewing okay. in my ear. Just swallow the food. She's irritated. Uh, yeah, because he's eating on our podcast, and he's chewing in my ear. And then with the excuse... We say, Andre, you can't eat on the podcast. He gonna look at Kim and go, well, you do it. 
You see what that says? It says two funny mamas. <laughs> Not two funny mamas and Andre. <laughs> Good grief. And yes, this is, I know why I'm single. I do. I do. I'm about to say that too. <laughs> Look, I know why I'm single. So this is a week, that's a whole nother discussion. But I, this is Kim was not able to say what her Valentine's Day surprise was or her Valentine's night surprise. So we brought on the people who made it happen. This is Siobhan, the very pretty woman over all the way over there. That's Siobhan. Kim's road manager who Mom. handles everything about Kim when she's on the road and she makes sure her life is together. That's Siobhan. Here comes the other one. Joshua. Okay, why do we need to start singing a Brady Bunch? There's Joshua. I don't know what is going on on this podcast. This is Joshua, who's also part of it. So stay, Joshua. That's Siobhan. Behind me, you guys know Andre. So Siobhan, you yes. take you take it away. What happened today? Because Kim is too tired. I won't touch it. It's well, what so happened hard. today was no, we no, need to see. Well, so you hard. maybe we should let Joshua talk first. Okay, what happened today, Joshua? Um, well, it was Valentine's Day, and I surprised my mom. Okay. With what? With um a dinner table outside. Sherry was gonna come, but then the mom said. Sherry can't come because she has to do something about Jeffrey and stuff. <laughs> no, kid, this sounds oh. terrible. But okay, keep going. Oh God, that's what he did. So, <laughs> so what else happened, Josh? What did you dress up? Did you? Yeah, I dressed up. What'd you like wear? A, like a spy. Oh, you dressed up like a spy because that's what yeah. your mommy likes. Nice. Spies. And my mom dressed up like a karaoke woman. <laughs> <laughs> so she your mom dressed like huh. a karaoke woman? Yeah, and it also showed a picture of her. Uh, that was a picture of you and your mom having dinner. What did you guys have dinner? Um, We had chicken, pizza, and then for dessert, we had, um, we had, um, some ice, ice cream, cream and cookies. Oh, ice cream and cookies. Okay. And where did you have dinner? Um, outside. Outside? We had the tennis court and the pool. Oh, oh wow. Well, you got wow. Oh, God. Damn. What? <laughs> Don't you ever ask your fans to feel bad for you. <laughs> okay, oh, Josh. No. All right, Josh, we thank you for being with us. Go on in there and check the room. Uh, by the way, I don't have a tennis. Okay, so scratch that, everybody. Uh, so whatever was. Okay, if okay. that wasn't the funniest thing. Okay, well, when I ask you how you doing, all I want to hear is I'm blessed and highly favored. Okay. So okay, this is so what now really Siobhan happened. is is going. So down. this is the truth. Siobhan, can, can you, this is so embarrassing. So what happened? The, the, let me Siobhan, tell you about it. Siobhan. Thanks, Joshua. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Oh, My head is hurting. <laughs> but Siobhan told me a couple of days ago, hey, you got, somebody wants to take you out on Saturday at 3.30. Just be ready. Didn't you, Siobhan? That's what I said. And did I give you any pushback? You did not, but you you said, okay, am I gonna wanna go with them? I said, I think you'll be good. I think it's okay. I was like, am I gonna like this person? And they've been COVID tested. <laughs> and that was the thing I said, are they, she said, I'm gonna make sure they have their results when they see you. Now, I want y'all to know, I've been working like a, oof, a tired dog. 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 <laughs> Chris, Chris, Chris said, don't, don't, don't say no word, don't say no word. Don't say <laughs> Um, and Siobhan has been there before when men have called and said, can I get Kim and friends, right? Can I get Kim on Kim's she schedule? She tried to clean out one of this. So I, I'm going to tell my part of the story. I got ready, but I did extra stuff because Siobhan didn't say like, oh, this is like a C choice. You know, like, you know, I'm thinking, I don't know who it is. So I shaved. Um, I did extra stuff that you would do. Like, that you should should do. Right. Regardless. regardless. Not regardless. If you're going out with your kid, really. But you didn't know it was going to be. Right. So I, I we let Siobhan tell the okay, story? Okay, go ahead. Siobhan. I think go Siobhan and Andre. Go on, Siobhan and Andre. Go ahead. So I'm I take told now. Andre that I needed to, um, him to come over to be a driver. So Joshua's going to dress up 
they were going to surprise Kim and take her out. So Kim was filming on yesterday, so I could not give her the information until afterwards. So I told her, by the way, someone has contacted me and they would like to take you out for a short date tomorrow at 3.30. I was excited. You have to be ready. She was very excited. Who is it? Really? Are you sure? Can we go earlier? The podcast. Not knowing that I had already contacted Chris, moved the podcast to a later time so it would flow. So long story short, she runs upstairs. She stays on track. She's on time. She comes down. Little does she know that outside of the door is a handsome young man by the name of Joshua. But didn't they drive you? you, you, you oh, no, we didn't. This is us at the house. Oh, okay. Gotcha. They blindfold me in the house. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So we blindfolded her in the house. She had to walk to the door. When she opened the door, she took her blindfold. No, off. first she was, sir, sir, back up, sir. Sir, she's coming out, sir. I said, what old man is your father? <laughs> Look at me, I oh, went, <laughs> sir. Okay, oh, oh, sir. Oh, God. So, so, okay. Joshua, so she takes her blindfold off, and it's Joshua standing there in his suit with his flowers. So then they put her in the car. Andre comes in because he has to drive her around while I prepare everything at the house. So he drives her around for about 35, Wait, 40 she, minutes. She didn't get a question. So I just wanted, so when you drove her around, how was the drive around? She was blindfolded the whole time, Andre? Uh, with some resistance. Uh, okay. I did ask her to put the blindfold on. And uh, she didn't want to, but. <laughs> Why are you selling heat <laughs> over <laughs> Because <laughs> I am. <laughs> oh, look at Joshua in his suit. That's my my date at the front door. Yeah. Oh. And so she put the blindfold on. And because she's always tired, she works hard. I said, well, just put the seat back and chill and relax. Yeah. And so that's why the blindfold didn't come off because she went to sleep. So she slept for the entire... But this is the thing. I said, how far is the restaurant? He said, it's really close. Ten minutes. I know we're driving. I said, I know we're on the four or five somewhere. Said, this is the longest drive. You know how you can feel it? I was like, we're going to the beach. But Siobhan, she said, keep going until I call you. So yeah, I, I didn't know. I had she... to rush and prepare the things because she did not know it was at the home. So I had to use the kitchen and could not use it until she left. She already had come downstairs prior to me knowing and almost ruined it, but we got through. And then I, I uh, drives us around for 45 minutes, and I get they tell me to get out the car. They guide me. They're like, we're at the restaurant. I'm walking on leaves and crunching. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this whole raggedy restaurant. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm like, who are you going to meet? Because you thought you was going on a date with somebody. Right. I did. They blindfold me. She, she, I guess she smelled the chlorine in the pool. She's like, are we near water? <laughs> are we at the beach? Yeah, yeah, we're at the beach. Oh, yeah. Andre was like, oh, uh, yeah, there is water. And look at that. That is, in the picture, you see Rory, Joshua's uh, godfather, and Siobhan. They were waiters. They had on aprons. Oh, look at that. And the table was set up. How did you feel flowers. when they took the blindfolds off and you saw that? You know, I was mixed feeling. I, I thought it was beautiful. <laughs> And, and, and yet I was angry. <laughs> you were angry? I, was, I, I know some dude better jump out these bushes. <laughs> I got a very, like, very upset very, text. I did, didn't I? You're like, I was are, like you, are you I jumping out or what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was interesting. And Andre was like, but you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. It was a wonderful feeling that not that just Joshua, but that my friends took the time. That's what I think I really enjoyed, that they were helping my son learn a lesson to show him how to take a woman out and how it is supposed to be done. And he'll remember this, of course I'll remember this, but I hope that he learns the, the way, like, he, he, one day I'm sure he's going to blindfold a woman. He's going to be, oh, let me show you. And For the I, right reasons. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. If that's something his mama teaching him, we got a problem. <laughs> what are you doing? Know blindfold and throw in the car. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, you God. drive her around for 45 minutes so she don't know what she is. Yeah. And you take her back to where it started. And you drew you drove me around for way too long, Andre. Well, I wanted to make sure you got a good nap, so you. Get I, ready. But you came back home. Boys to Men was playing. Yeah. Oh, the Mama song. Oh, that's right. Oh, dear Mama. Dear, dear Mama. Yeah. yeah. And I opened gifts. He brought me gifts, and there was flowers. 
And then uh, the waiters, what was your name? Mindy? Misty. Misty. <laughs> Misty uh, and Rory uh, brought out uh, drinks and then they brought out fruit and then the meal was served and then dessert. Um, and then we all sat around and talked and laughed and uh, it was absolutely, even oh, my brother beautiful. was in or my brother had cleaned up the backyard. Oh, uh, look at that. That's so beautiful. So look right at by that. the pool. And that's Joshua sitting on my lap. Oh, and, uh, I'm sure he had a ball. He was so excited. He did take my phone away. Oh, he so said, you wouldn't be on the phone. That's what yes. I needed to do. He was like, your guess. phone is detained. I was like, oh, detained? <laughs> he know how to do a woman. He like, I'm going to take that like, phone. You ain't going to uh, call nobody. He was like, uh, it was like uh, sequestered. I said, that's the word, Joshua. <laughs> so he didn't want me to be on my phone. And he wanted all your attention. And I had a good time. We talked about girls and, you know, dating. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I was disappointed you weren't there with Jeffrey. I thought and, it and good. I wasn't disappointed at all. Okay. So what I'm going to answer, y'all said, I'm going to answer what Joshua said. I got embarrassed because I didn't know he was going to say it. <laughs> they all, Siobhan and my assistant, Edie, was trying yes. to get it together so that Joshua and Jeffrey would both take us out. Yes. yes. I'm glad that didn't happen. Oh my God. I'm Yes, <laughs> I'm really, because see, Joshua is 10. At 10 years old, they're into, mommy, you're so pretty. Mommy, I want to marry you. Mommy, you know, I want all your attention. I got a 15 year old who don't even like me half the time. <laughs> Literally, Andre went to train him uh, this morning. Jeffrey wants to eat healthy. Every time I say his name, he's like, Ugh, Ugh, why are you saying my name? Just can you, can you just give me my space? And so I said, Jeffrey, Andre is down there and you say you want to lose weight. I know how to lose weight on my own. Can you tell her? I don't need her. I don't need her. And I can hear him upstairs in my room. I don't take it personal because he's a teenager. He ain't disrespectful to me, but he don't like me. So he telling Andre, I can hear him all the way up in my room telling Andre how I keep talking to him. I say good morning to him. He can do stuff on his own. Like Andre, he like he going off. Then he was fine with the ropes and everything. But he just, he, and so I was trying to tell Kim at 10, Jeffrey was the same way. We went out for our birthday and we had a great time. He, Jeffrey was like, want to kiss me. Mommy, you're the prettiest in the world. Mommy, wear that wig. He was, at 15, you would have had to force Jeffrey to do what Joshua did willingly. Jeffrey would have had a bad time. I would have had a bad time. Because <laughs> the moment I said, Jeffrey, do you want anything to eat? Yeah! Are you, why is she talking to me? <laughs> Please tell me, that, really? Je do my son, do my son. I said good morning. What else do you want me to say? I said good morning. 15 oh, years. Why does she always put your hand? Tell, tell you her, know, tell her not to talk to me. So just tell her, just, just ask her not to talk to me. That's all. I just want you to. <laughs> That's what he says. So at 15, <laughs> at 15, like Kim was saying, you know, we need to teach them how to take a woman on a date. If Jeffrey had to take Kim out, like for a faux dinner or mm -hmm. Siobhan, Miss Siobhan, then you would have been. But the <laughs> moment I took off my blind phone, this would have been Jeffrey. Oh! <laughs> Check out your life, oh, that's a step. Oh! Why is she here? Why is she talking to me? You're like, oh! You're good. You're like yeah, that's my son. That's, that's my son every day. Every day. So we all would have, it'd been, I wouldn't have had a good time. Well, let's, let's, it wouldn't have worked for me. I'm just do. saying. So. He'll get over it. He'll be all right. Yeah, and, then, and you say, don't take it personal yeah, because. Why should I take it personal? Which I don't. Well, why? Why? I, and I want to talk to mothers who have teenage boys who go through this. Because he'll grow out of it. That's, that's, that's what we do. He wants, at 15, he's trying to find himself. He wants to be independent, yeah. but he can't be. Right. So, you know, he's just trying to figure it out. That's all. And so and that's what, and so Andre goes, just don't take it personal. Like I said, he's not disrespectful. He, he did all the chores that Andre did at the house. Had him do. He was, he, Andre had a moving box. He was like, how many more of these? The boxes. He was like, because if you tell Jeffrey there's 12 more boxes, he'll do it. He don't want to do 14. Okay, tell him there's 12 and he's on it. So I'm glad it didn't work out that way because I wouldn't have had a good Valentine's Day. At Aww. 10 years old, mm -hmm. no, no, it's okay. He's a teenager. Like, mm -hmm. he don't want his mama showing him nothing. I tell Andre to mm -hmm. give it to him and he does. So it's okay. 
Joshua okay. be the same way. Well, so Kimberly wants yeah. to make the cut because Joshua wanted to give all the money to his girlfriend. So it was oh, what money? He, the money he was supposed to spend on me. That he oh, hoards. He Oh, he wanted yeah, to Joshua give it back. He's pulling game on people. Yeah, he wanted to give it to his girlfriend, Gabby, and not his godmother, <clears throat> Amy, and not me. He said, I'm he going to, to give it all to her. You know, and they're like that. Je I, I give Jeffrey money for his allowance, and Jeffrey says he's moving to New York, and he's never, ever coming back. And if I ever want to see him, I have to fly to New York to see him. So he comes in. He's like, I just want you to know I'm going to New York, and I'm not coming back. Did you tell him how much a plane ticket cost? No, but this, he said, he said, <laughs> how do you get there? Do you take what airline? And I said, oh Delta or America. He goes, oh he, he goes, he goes, what airline do I take, mommy? That, then he goes back to Jeffrey. And I said, you could take both. And he was like, okay, I'm taking Delta or America. And I'm never, ever, ever coming back. You have to come visit me. And he goes, and I said, well, you going to book a ticket? He goes, I don't know how to do that. Like, he goes back to Jeffrey. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Can you do that for me, mommy? But I'm never coming back. Like everything makes them angry. And I used to be like that with my mother. I don't know if y'all used to be like that with y'all parents. My mother would no, come in my- No, because my teeth would have been missing. <laughs> but even, my, you know, half my teeth was missing too. But when I was 16, this very sight of my mother made me so enraged. I just couldn't stand my mother. Really? Everything in my head was like, oh my God, I hope you die. You know, and that's how teenagers are. Did you get like that, Siobhan? No. no, my mother. Okay, you're also a good Christian girl, so I don't even want to ask you. You know why? Because I remember I was at 16. I was I came in from a party and I had a drinking contest with this dude. You know, it's very competitive. Yes. Who could drink a 40 the fastest? Duh. But I didn't know a 40 would make you drunk. You know, I didn't think about it. He was like, "We're gonna have a drinking contest. Who could drink a 40?" I was like, "I got this because I win all the pie eating contests in school and everything." So and I they qualified 40. you for a drinking contest. Yep, I took a 40 to the head. And then I went straight down the basement steps head first. Ooh. Mm. Uh, and, and then when I got home, I was like, whoa, I was late. My mother waiting on me in the kitchen. And she was like, you know you're late after your curfew. And I guess she knew I was drunk. And when I tell you, I had never been slapped so many times standing. She <laughs> went pop, backhand, front <laughs> end, backhand. Front end. Like I couldn't, she was just slapping me. I was pop, pop, pop. Did you think, you're my, why are you hitting me? I no, I knew why she was hitting me because I drank a 40. And uh I, I just remember so my mother and but even after that I didn't hate her because I was wrong. I stayed upstairs for two days because I was afraid to come downstairs. Yeah, I was afraid uh, my mom, but she, I couldn't stand her. But I respect her. Did no, you... uh, that's why I can't. I don't think. Some yeah. people go through that, some people don't. Jeffrey maybe go through it because I went through it. Maybe it's in our DNA. We had our parents. Oh, I didn't hate my mom, but my dad say when they get in the nursing home. I was going to push you down the steps of the wheelchair. Was, okay, then there it was. But that was it when I was out. probably 10, but at that age, not older. It came out. You're right. You know, you always think, but like, ooh, I'm going to get you. Oh, I always said that. That's now, what did you do with your mom, with Sandy? Yeah. Well, I, I stayed in my room. She 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 created boundaries early. So my room was my room, her room was my room. And, and so my escape was to go to my room. But she worked and went to school. So I pretty much, I was a last key kid. I raised myself. So in doing that, when she was around, I, I felt I independent, you. you know? Yeah. yeah so I like, really I've, I've, I've okay. been, yeah, I did. Because okay. I, I come home from school. She said, put the pot pie in the oven when the Brady Bunch come on, take it out when the Brady Bunch. So I fed myself. <laughs> I looked after myself. So when she came in, running the show, Brady I'm like, well, I'm a man. You told me I'm the man of the house. I have keys. Who are you to tell me what to do? <laughs> I have keys. <laughs> hey, so and yeah. when did you see that you wasn't a man with your mom? Uh, when she knocked me out. Alexa off. <laughs> Alexa, oh. Alexa started playing a nursery rhyme. Lullaby. So I got knocked out right on time. Got knocked out. Yeah. My mom, she 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 let me know where the line was. I did, I never crossed the line. You know, I might have mumbled well, under my what, breath, but did I did you I were you angry with her? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean you you're dealing with testosterone coming in, voice changing, hair sticking out. You get a hard on at any every thirty seconds. Well I still do that, but you know <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was that what this is on the chair? Ah, oh, that look. <laughs> oh, God. I'm on to the left, to the left. Oh, Andre said he asked you to be his Valentine. Oh, jeez, Louise. Because you called, you asked and Chris you to be your no. Valentine, right? So, so I just said like, he asked you. So I asked. Why her. are you so mean? I'm not mean. Why could you just say yes? Okay, cool. Why? We're all friends. 
I don't because Andre's like family. That's complete. Incest. Chris is like family. What are we talking? No, he's about not. Here? You've never treated Chris like family. You've always treated him like. That'd be a, that'd be a weird family relationship yeah, with the discussions we've like had. Family, so Thank you. With that bullshit, you never did that. So you ain't never. So don't be. We and Chris family too. No, I treat Chris like family, <laughs> like a brother to get on my nerves. You what? don't. Okay, you might have a point there. Yeah, thank you. But why would you think Andre trying to hit on you? Well, hold on. Before we go to this, we never got to Siobhan about her, like, what was the worst you went through with your mother? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That was Uh, was a good... Well, that was raised by my grandparents, but I think it was mostly just not being able to go anywhere, that not being Being able to stay out, you know, after school and not having the transportation because once they got off, ate dinner, it was going to be the news and they were going to bed. That's oh, so yeah, that's when you raised by old people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you all the lights go out in the house at everybody, a certain time, yeah, everybody got to go to bed. Yeah. Did you watch anything besides CBS? <laughs> Peter Jennings. <laughs> and The Price is Right. That's what you was watching. Barnaby oh, Jones. Bro, <laughs> oh, That's true, though. Oh Hawaii my Bible. gosh, Hawaii Five O. Mannix. So I turned seven. Mannix. I was out. Ironside. <laughs> okay, how old are we for? Oh, that is so. Funny. Oh my god. So that was it for you. That was it. So once I graduated, I was like, I'm out. I found where I wanted to go, and I never came back. Oh, <gasps> I mean, never came back. I, mean, I go visit, but right. not to really. Live. You moved out after you graduated from high school. Yeah. Found oh, my wow. college, Johnson C. Smith online. I was like, I'm gonna go. I had no family, no friends. I packed up and moved down there by but myself. They raised her well because she didn't get knocked up. She oh, got yeah, her yeah. education. My yeah. grandfather wasn't playing, but let me tell you yeah. something. You bring somebody in there if you want to. It's about to be on. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. It's like freedom, but I'm still going to act like I'm with my grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> No, she right. mom was probably in college turning off the lights at eight. <laughs> Everybody was sitting. Everybody in the dorm got to go to bed. But that's how she mom is now when we go on the road. She's yeah. like, I like both at eight. Everybody got to go to bed. Kim, time for you to go to bed. <laughs> That is so true. That for the really record, good. anybody who's coming in now and listening, this is Siobhan Kim Whitley's road manager. Yes. Andre, our friend Jack of All Trades. Uh-huh. Sharing the screen with us tonight. Right. Talking and, about that, and, and we want everybody to know that Siobhan has had all her uh, shots. It's like a goal. I know. So is <laughs> Andre. Now mm-hmm. she's got. She got no, the, she got she the, got the, the oh, you got the, vaccine. Oh, you got vaccinated. She's been vaccinated. She got two vaccinations. Uh, got three been tested. <laughs> you got three titties. Let me see. Pull your shirt up. Pull your shirt up. Because I know you got three titties. Not yet. Did no, they tell you yet. what to do to your uterus? No. Because see, mine, I don't even want mine. So if, if, <laughs> if they make it say, Miss Shepard, you can't handle more kids. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> My dad finished his shots uh, yesterday. He got his second one. Yep. So How did done. it feel you getting your vaccine, um, Siobhan? I was nervous. For the first and the second, because you hear so much, and I was like, okay, what's gonna happen? Am I gonna fall out? Am I gonna pass out? Am I gonna die? Whatever. But after the first one, I was like, okay, I got it. The second one, got a little nervous, mm-hmm. but you know, it felt fine. I'm still using precaution, taking it lightly. I'm still masking up because you, it's not 100%, but it feels great. You know, it's so funny because you the the vaccine. When people say if it's not gonna fight the Brazilian one and the the other one, the African, the South African, African, one. South African mm-hmm. one. But what it creates is these antibodies in your body so that if COVID does come into contact with you, you still got 70% of antibodies in your in your body to help fight it. Now, that's not to say you can't catch COVID, but you got a lesser chance of catching COVID, which is why they were doing this herd thing, um, because they if everybody has the antibodies, you know, it's a lesser chance of it spreading to everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's been really hard getting people of color to get Mm -hmm. this vaccine with that, you know, with the Tuskegee experiment and all this stuff, Mm -hmm. we never thought the government cared about us. Are you getting a vaccine, Andre? I'm just waiting for about a year. See, there you go. Because you have a lot of people like, I want to wait and see what, what are you waiting on? The zombie apocalypse. I want to, every movie that they make, people that took a vaccine. Oh I want to be the last one standing with oh a bazooka. My God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I ain't gonna be but you know what, Sherry? I waited in line for six hours for the vaccine. Are you serious? And there, 
I may have seen six or seven African Americans the entire because time. Because they're not doing a very good no job. That's the one thing I have to say about our, our president. This is not his fault, but Fauci and everybody have to do a better job of getting to people of color mm-hmm. to dispel any kind of yes. trepidations that, that mm-hmm. they would have in any of these myths. You know, uh, there were some uh, doctors that talked to me in, in uh, Houston. And what they said, and I don't know how true this is, but this is what they said to me. They said, we're misinformed about Tuskegee. The people that they, you know, they, they gave them syphilis, you know, right. they already had syphilis. Uh-uh. They just didn't give them their medication. Kim, do you have some? She said, all those people who said, syphilis. they had syphilis, but they were not given the syphilis medication. So it wasn't that they injected. So I don't know. Uh, That's is, what that, I is that really what, I don't know about that. Let's, let's really do some research on that. Well, we'll do research on it because I don't want to be spread. But this is what I was told on a Zoom. And but Andre, we'll, we will research that. But Andre, knowing that a lot of black people have taken it, mm-hmm. you know, they have a lot of the frontline workers, a lot of the people in the industry, uh, health industry, mm-hmm. restaurant industry who've gotten it, older people, nothing has happened. That still isn't making you say, OK, I'm going to go get it. It's, you it, literally still want to wait a year. I'm, I'm waiting a year, man. OK. It, to, to create any kind of vaccine, measles, mumps, all that, they, they did this too fast. But they have been working and on SARS. They have been working on SARS, SARS for a long time. Okay, this is what, it, it's a global pandemic. Okay. So it should just be one vaccine. Why can't all these people get together and globally and say, okay, this is the one. They got this vaccine over here and this version But I think that's how it is with the flu shot. It's not just one yeah, flu shot. They have company. different pharmace- pharmaceutical companies making the flu shot. Well, I'll wait so for you have- one that's proven is 100%. Well, nothing is 100%, baby. It's even, you got 80%, you got 89%, you got the Johnson & Johnson one, which is one shot, is 72%. So there's nothing guaranteed 100%. They're also talking about a booster. Yes. And a booster shot. So, not sure. but see, this is what I'm saying. They have to target more because I think there's a lot more people of color that feel the way Andre feels mm-hmm. rather than the way you or I or Siobhan feels. So what do you think about the fact, Andre? I think that people are going to say, if you want to work, you got to get that vaccine. Oh, they might say And if that. you want to travel. You if you want to travel, you got to get that vaccine, which stops you from doing stand up. Because I'm not taking you to Utah. I'm not I'll driving drive. you to Utah. I'll start, I'll start. Okay, your car is not going to make it to you. So I'm going to say this right now. I'm going to put this out about Andre's car. The last car he had, a tree fell on it. And that was it. The damn tree fell right in his car. So that means that you won't be able to fly. Don't act like I'm telling his business. It's just a tree trunk. Um, you know, it just says that you won't be able to go to your gigs. Right. I'll, I'll figure out something. I'm from Chicago. I'm gonna figure it out. I'm... Yeah, see, I think that they got to do a better job of targeting right, people right. who have that fear of getting the vaccination. Really, I don't. It. It's not so much a fear. I'm just. I get tested. I stay away from everybody. I'm gonna stay in my room as long as I can. You sitting here with three people. Y'all get tested got... every other day. I know, but I'm saying. But you... look, prime example. A lady who was drunk, Andre was getting out of his car yep. from being with us, yep. going into his, am I telling your business? No, okay. you must have said I that. I was right. He was mad. I was pissed off. He was him. getting out of his car and a drunk lady came up to him and kind of fell on him and said she was lost. And Andre wanted to help, was trying to give and her directions. She's spitting all in the, Yeah, she spit. And then he realized this woman don't have no mask on. He immediately quarantined, but he was mad. And I'm saying that was something that you couldn't control. You didn't know. So even though you quarantine and all the time, you go get tested, stuff still happens, Andre. You are you horny, first of all. So you. I didn't want to bring that up. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Wait, I, I didn't want to bring that up. Three other women are like, <laughs> you was horny. horny. <laughs> okay. So it's sorry, Sandy. Even Siobhan is even like, Siobhan. Yes. Siobhan has been right celibate up. successfully for a long time. And like, she can <laughs> smell horny on you. <laughs> it's coming off in waves. We thought that was garlic. <laughs> this sucker, that's horny. Siobhan said he's rubbing up on me. Thank you. I'm slowly chipping Siobhan away. Siobhan can hear. Feel oh, Andre staying all the way on her hip. Look at him. Look at him. He's working his way up to you, Javon. You want to cuddle Andre? <laughs> <laughs> and look, and Sandy, 
Uh, Andre's mama's watching us. We sorry, Sandy, you, but your son God is horny. Oh, no, my mom, she horny too. She's talking about <laughs> this show is bad. This, I can't wait till this COVID is over. It's, it's hard being lonely. <laughs> mama, I don't want to hear this. Mm. Mm. Well, why do you think you can be a horny as she can? It's in your DNA, baby. Y'all horny too. What you talking about? No. No. <laughs> no. Women are different. Yeah, we are so different. Yeah. I'm just saying, here is what I'm saying about the being horny. Wait a minute. <laughs> but you are horny. Yeah, I am. But this is what I'm saying about being horny, my friend. If you get, because Andre always posted, all I need is cuddle buddy. Just a cuddle buddy <laughs> and thirsty. somebody to dream with. Now you can't get both of them. A cuddle buddy and somebody, and somebody to dream, dream with. And somebody dream. So you're always saying it. So if you get your cuddle buddy and you're horny and she, anything can happen, Andre. Right. Corona is the new, is it the new herpes? <laughs> <laughs> it's the new, it's you know, and so I'm trying to pull my hair because it's big on bottom. But uh, I'm just saying anything. Did we forget about age? Where did age go? Oh, that's, that's been true. gone. That's <laughs> and nobody said nothing. Take your lungs. lungs. No. Yeah. What take your lungs? COVID. No, we were saying COVID, herpes don't yeah. take your kidneys, kidney and your, your lungs, lungs and your breath. But that you COVID live, will take your yeah, shit. Yeah, that COVID will take your stuff. But I'm just saying, wouldn't you feel better if somebody you knew she had the vaccine, you got the vaccine? Yes. Y'all could be cuddle buddies. That's why I can't date nobody. I'm too afraid. Okay, I don't know what you just said. I said, well, I can't date anyone because I'm too afraid. I'm afraid people want to take me out. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. I cannot unless they get tested. And then they get an attitude. If you ask a man, can you get COVID? Like, hey, Chris, hmm. if you fly in, can you and, and uh, will you get tested before we see each other? Yeah. Of course. Will you quit answering for him? <laughs> Chris, would you That was my favorite part of the night. Sorry, that was amazing. <laughs> that was just rude, and I don't know. Okay, I'm going to start hearing. She's blocking. She's blocking. I don't know what's happening tonight. Sure. Sorry. 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 No, sorry. sorry, go ahead. Yes, yes, lips. If you flew in, hey. If you flew in and uh, before we saw each other, would you mind? It's going to be so disappointing. Tested. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Uh, how how else am I supposed to how else am I supposed to come uh, check out the Tempur Pedic, watch a little Netflix? You know, come on. She told him about the Tempur. Don't worry, don't worry about how you know. I'm just Chris, but yes. you would that's fine. See, he would get tested. Well, why not? Because yeah. Most people who come off a plane do understand they have to get tested. There's a lot of people who don't take it seriously, who don't get tested. The this one, the locals, yeah, you get tested, Siobhan gets tested. So, you know, you're not going to be with those type of people. Um, but it is rather hard. It don't, that don't scare me, because I'm like, if we're going to go out on a date, you got to get tested. Right, that's the thing. It's not even that hard. Cause but then, what are you? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna have them over? Like, what is? What's the date? Like, not not us. I mean, Kim, that's a whole different ballgame. What are you doing if you decide? To, yeah, that's right. That's the smiles just crept across the screen there. That was nice. Uh, the, <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna actively date, are you gonna have some bubble zone that's also safe? Like, what are you gonna do? Like, you gotta go for a walk on the beach or something? Like, what's the deal? Yeah, those are really great times um, to get to know somebody. Yeah, now if I would fly out to see, I would, I, I don't, I would get tested if I went to see somebody. Yes. Yeah, I think that's worth it for sure. I definitely would because then you are free to be intimate and talk and sit on each other. What is wrong with Chris? This, you know, let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This is a thing. Spit on each other. This is a thing. Don't spit on each other. Why are you saying it? Right. Yeah, Andre. I'm not saying it. Right. Yeah, Andre. I don't know. What I, is that how you kiss? Do you just spit on people? <laughs> just flim on them? Kiss? How? <laughs> Mm. Okay. All right. How do you kiss? Six feet. Six, six foot. <laughs> no, Ew, seriously. Disgusting. I mean, like when you're talking, you know, across each other, spit might fly. DNA. I don't really be spit. Don't be flying that much. Like, <laughs> just <laughs> no. But sometimes you say peas. Okay. Peas. I guess some words have peas in them. Oh gosh. See, just like you that. You overthink everything. That's your life. You overthink way too much. I do. I'm penis, 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 penis. Whole hand. Penis. Whole hand. Mm. You, 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 you go, go home. No, Siobhan, this is what I, this is what I, K 
kissing is a is I would miss that kissing because I love to kiss. So, <laughs> Wake up. Sorry, be able to if you get tested negative and I get tested negative, it's gonna be some smooching. We gonna be kissing, but kissing leads to petting. Not necessarily. <laughs> old term. Yeah, I'm t- how old are you? Jeez, little <laughs> But Sherry, how long is the vaccine? How long is the test valid for? So suppose they get tested 48 hours in advance, and right? And you see oh. them in the 24th hour. So are they really still COVID free? Okay, well, I didn't go to. I quit algebra. I'm not <laughs> I think I think I the technical, technical like I think if you would break it down is if the dude finishes in less than 10 minutes, you're good. Like I think you're still covered. No. Is that not? Oh, is that? Oh, you're a two minute dude. I'm saying specifically for medically. <laughs> I said if the dude fit. I said. Because if I go first, uh, good luck. Okay. Good luck. I don't know how we got into that. Right. You can't pass. You can't pass COVID if it's less than ten minutes. I read that. Okay. Nasty. Nasty. Stop. <laughs> I just want to cuddle. I just want to put my head on your shoulder. That's it. You know, you just you want to cuddle. You want to. You don't want to think about somebody. Cuddle. Yes. No. <laughs> you don't want to cuddle. That's you what you want to cuddle. Want to cuddle? I do want to cuddle. Yeah, but you, you want to talk cuddle. about my body too hot. You... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Like, are you what adding happened? words to what we said? What I don't, we did not say that. <laughs> I said it one night Andre's in the bed. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hmm? You don't even sound right. Don't even sound right. <laughs> you better explain that. Remember I told you Andre fell asleep in my bed one night? Remember that in my new tempered pedic? Because everybody funny. wants to get in. Kim's got this new tempered I got a stage. Everybody, <laughs> and, and everybody to wants to get in the bed and feel because it vibrates, it vibrates, it moves one up side, and down. one side it's reclines, one side goes up, it while the amazing. other side stays. One, it will go all the way down. You don't need a woman in that bed. You really <laughs> don't. <laughs> she, she got the creme de la creme of tempered pedic because it took her so long to get it. So everybody <laughs> wants to to try it out and, and do the remotes because it's got yes. two separate remotes and all of this. So Andre climbed in the tempur bed because he sleep on the floor at his place. So he <laughs> climbed in the bed. Yeah. 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 Just the two. <laughs> and look at the air mattress. <laughs> air mattress. <laughs> I crawl out the box in the underpass, make my way over here. Crawl <laughs> out the box and the underpants. That's hysterical. Oh, I can't. I can't. Oh, my God. Oh. So, so uh, he he uh, used got on uh, Kim's bed. So that's what they're talking about when she says, you slept with me. Yes. Um, did heat. you try Kim's weighted blanket? Kim got a blanket that weighs 300 pounds of weighted blanket because she can't sleep. So she puts this heavy ass blanket that weighs like, like she's an infant papoosed up. On her, so she can go to sleep. I didn't feel comfortable with the weighted blanket. That weighted blanket. Oh, I love joke. the I tried like somebody holding you down. <laughs> <laughs> you got issues. I tried to lift that weighted blanket to help you make up the bed. I said my arms hurt. It's, it's a, so an actual weighted blanket. It's a weighted blanket, and this is a new thing. It's usually for you know, you use I use it for Jeffrey when he was younger, but they make it for adults too because it kind of it grounds your oh. nervous system mm-hmm. and it calms you down. So that's what they say. Well, no, it does. well, Kim goes to sleep. You know, look at her. She's going to sleep now. That's why she don't need no man. That blanket holding her down. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's I'm right. trying to decide if that would be so a good actually, nickname or not. We actually have to get back to business yes. on our podcast, oh. you guys. I need to get Kim before we lose her. Well, no, no, let's let no, no. Hold on, since we have the game, we don't we gonna talk about some stuff. Okay. Because this is fun. Uh, this is a this is a special episode of Game. The gang. The I gang. <laughs> no, I almost said gang member. <laughs> the gang member. Um, we're gonna talk about this is one of the things I wanted to talk about. Uh Tessica, Tessica Brown is what her name is, mm-hmm. also known as Gorilla Glue Girl. She was the one that had a big Uh-oh. the big eye. I put the I put gorilla glue in my hair and it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it she did. must be from New Orleans. No, she, yeah, she's like from that. New Orleans and it didn't move. So anyway, Tessica Brown. Uh Put she ran out of uh, got to, gots be, to be glue. So if you could put up gots to be glue, Chris, 
Gots to be glue is a hair gel that women use to slick their hair down and or keep it in lace, place. And the lace front, right? And your lace front, yeah. So it, it's, it, it slicks your, it keeps your lace front down so it looks like it's your natural hair. Now, don't you all have something called Gorilla Snot? Yes, I, know, I was also gonna say, uh, we also have something called Gorilla Snot, which is also a hair gel that you can put in. I don't know, it's got a gorilla on there and it's snot and it's a gel that you put in your hair. So Tessica normally uses gots to be glue, but she ran out. So she saw a can of Gorilla Glue spray. Do you have that? Gorilla Glue spray. And she used it to slick her hair back to wear this beautiful ponytail. Now for a month, her hair would not move. It was frozen in place shellac down and she no matter there were all these videos that she made where she tried to put shampoo on it and it wouldn't move the hair these videos went viral caught the attention of chance the rapper everybody because she couldn't get this glue out of her hair so she finally for a month and i was concerned because you know if your blood if your mm -hmm. scalp absorbs that glue it could get into your bloodstream you could die yeah now the gorilla glue <clears throat> it says do not put on your skin it's like super glue it's used to bind regular stuff. Contractors use it. Yes. So she eventually had to go to emergency. They tried putting acetone and water in her hair to break it up. Mm. But apparently the Gorilla Glue expands. The acetone burned her scalp really bad. I thought they couldn't even cut her hair because it was so hard. To even her, if you, it was yeah, to her yeah. scalp. Mm. It had closed up her pores. So even if you tried it with a, you know, with a shave, the shave, shave the men's hair. What is that thing called? The clippers. The clippers. It's like a, a drill on cement. <clears throat> Wouldn't go. So Tessica, I mean, she this girl's going viral. She getting all these followers. She's upset. So a plastic surgeon, an African plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills, I believe, named Dr. I want to get this right because I want to give him his props. Dr. Michael Obang mm -hmm. said he would fly. This is Dr. Michael Obang. He said he would fly Tessica out to his office. He put her under, operated on her and put he, he researched the products that would break down the glue. Oh. And and this is what I love. This is what I love about this black he's a man. Chemist or something. He is, mm -hmm. he's some kind of chemist. So he went through she didn't lose any of her hair. Right, because I was gonna say he went through he every must have a strand. Black wife. He went no, he's a black man. He got a black mama. He said they can't lose their hair. This black man knew you cannot lose your black women don't want we don't want to lose a baby hair. We don't want to lose the edge. Right. We don't want to lose nothing. So he went through each strand of her hair and got the glue oh, out, no. and she didn't lose any of her hair. This is him, and God, that's, that's when they were putting the acetone and water on her hair. Oh, So I'm not that saying was that, another that, that was at the emergency, yeah. the ER, and they let her go because they said this was too much liability. So they let her go. So this doctor, can we show what Tessica looks like now? Wow. So Tessica, he found the chemicals that- He found was, the chemicals. He researched the chemicals. That would break it this down. is her hair. She's a pretty girl. Wow. Albeit a little bit older than what we thought without the, the contact lenses and, the and a long ponytail mm -hmm. and the lashes. Yeah. But she got she kept all of her hair and he knew Good she's a black woman. She won her hair. Wow. So t what do y'all think about this? Now that I've explained what this whole Gorilla Glue thing is. Andre, what do you think? Uh, she needs to read because... <laughs> You should know not to put glue in your head. No, uh, but this is what I think know. happened, Andre. We just showed oh, gorilla glue. snot, gorilla snot glue with the gorilla glue, on there yeah. is for your hair. Gots to be glue is for your hair. And I think it goes. This woman, I think she, and I'm sorry, I'm going to say this and let you talk. I think she might have thought gorilla glue from Gots to be glue, gorilla snot was probably the same thing. That's what I think she might have thought that it, even though, and I don't think she read it. I, I think there's another conversation here. The fact that she felt the need to have to slick her hair down and have a long ponytail. Why you don't look up at the camera? Cause I think he high. I don't tell you. Don't never look <laughs> at the camera when you're talking. I think there's another it's a podcast. Another issue here at <laughs> hand that we need to address. The fact that sisters feel the need to slick their hair down but to assimilate you. and have a ponytail all down her back. If she didn't need that, her hair would have never got stuck. You is one, you don't, you like natural hair on a woman. Like Siobhan's hair, you love Siobhan's hair. That's why you Siobhan, keep, that's why keep hitting on Siobhan. <laughs> <laughs> when he's, he, Andre, I, like this is the only time Andre would touch me. I'll be washing the dishes at my house and if I got my real hair on a ponytail, I'll just do this. 
<laughs> just a hand. I'm like, what the hell? And he'll go, why don't you wear your own hair? I don't want to. Too much work. It's too. It, yeah, it's just it's too, it's just easy to put a wig on. But Andre, you like too much work. Right? You you sat up for three hours in that. Stuff. Not every day. That's you do it for three hours, it lasts for three years. <laughs> there you go. Albeit she loses a couple braids. If you look up, it might be a couple braids lying at her feet. But, but uh, I know you said it's a bigger issue because that's the thing I looked at too. She got the light contacts. Yes. Those big old eyelashes. And you also, men don't like those big old eyelashes. I don't care what spider women, we, eyelashes. those big spider eyelashes. Look at it. She, she never closed her eyes the whole time she was talking. She was like, I put that in my hair and then I couldn't get it out. And then her eyes never closed. Pretty lady. Wow. She's very pretty, Tessica is. What do you think, Siobhan? Uh, I'm like, Andre, I don't think she read, but, you know, I think there was a misperception with Gorilla, Gorilla, Gorilla. She may have been in a rush. She put it on. I'm just mad that, you know, she got a lot of money out of it. Okay, so oh, this is it. She has money. a GoFundMe account, which as of as of now, is tw- she was trying to raise $1,500. She has $23,000 in her GoFundMe account. Did she say what it was for? What she was trying to get the GoFundMe account for? Trying to find someone initially uh, to, help, uh-huh. to help her get the stuff out of her hair. Yeah. And but she now, got it done for free. And the, the, the plastic surgeon, Dr. Obang, did it for free. So she's got $23,000. Um, there's also, an update. Now, have you heard the update? What's the update? This is what TMZ says. I don't know how much we're going to trust that, but it sounds like a good story. Gorilla Glue Girl, Tessica Brown, donating $20,000 from GoFundMe Hall to Reconstructive Surgery Organization. Oh, wow. oh that's nice. Oh, um, she may want to hold off on that because she got to pay taxes on that money. Okay. So she, if you donate the entire, I don't know if you have to pay tax if you donate it to another charity. I wonder. I don't know. Oh, probably because not. Because you can write it off at that point. You should be able to. I somebody, wonder. Somebody told her to do that. I, she needs to check. She needs to yeah. get that checked out because when you get money from GoFundMe, you have to pay taxes on it. And so she donates it. She might still owe taxes. I don't know. But I think that's really awesome that she's donating it to reconstructive, um, a reconstructive site. She also has hundreds of thousands of followers. Yes. She also is, you know, when you get like a person who's verified, there's that blue check mark next to their name. Instagram has verified her. She's a verified <laughs> member. You know how hard it is to get verified? We've been trying to get Joshua verified for 10 years, and he's 10 years old. He ain't got, got verified. book deal. She's going to get a movie made. I'm, somebody going to do a movie. And he was on He had his own TV show. Yeah, Joshua had his own TV show. We sent that And he still couldn't in. get verified. They still kicked it back. Somebody's gonna do a movie on her. I bet you Rihanna already got what the What you right. doing in there, girl? Oh, I gotta flip my hair down. And that's how it's done. Who gonna play that part? I think probably Rihanna has the rights. Either her or Janet Jackson probably got the rights to the Tessica Brown story. Somebody didn't talk to her about the rights. Oh, and by the way, on Tuesday, I will be interviewing her on Dish Nation. Oh, wow. So wow. if ain't nobody got the rights, guess what? Yeah, wait a minute, and she got, well, well, so now she's gonna the story be on TV. Be. Hmm? Why would you? What's that well, they're gonna go back story? into her life of why she, you know, where all the problems started. Where all the problems okay. started. They, yeah, it, you could make. Now a she got TV interviews. We can make a sitcom from Tessica Brown's life. But here. Sherry, I think it also teaches you how powerful social media is because Absolutely. no one knew her. She went viral in 24 hours. Like you said, got over 100,000 followers, plus a GoFundMe page, plus a True. verification. When I hit my lip, a free I trip to LA and plastic surgery. Yeah. I will be but nobody my reached out to me when my lips was this big. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm. No, didn't nobody say, oh, let me help you with that big scar in the middle of your nose. Well, probably because Josh was telling everybody you got a tennis court. That's probably <laughs> why. <laughs> the people don't want to tend to help people. No. <laughs> but I think it's different, Kim, because you're a celebrity. You, and I say that in quotations, you're a celebrity. So I don't think people uh, uh, will come to our aid because they go, you got money. To, to Tessica Brown, obviously, you knew she didn't have the finances to... She could get blue contacts. Yeah, but you, every, you know, my cousin, you know, got five kids. She got blue contacts. Oh. So I think that people already knew she was not a celebrity. She needed help. This is what I also love is a lot of celebrities are donating wigs to her. But... Uh, Lonnie Love and Robbie Rogers, who oh, makes wow. our, a lot of our wigs, they're donating a wig. Portia Williams, who has a wig line, is donating a wig. I think that when I thought she was going to lose her hair, I was going to try and talk to a bunch of celebrities that I know that maybe we could, you know, give her a wig. But her hair seems to be fine, so I don't think that we need to. I want a man right. weave. I'm, that's why I'm trying to grow my hair a little bit. Don't get a man weave. 
You really want to do man do weaves? Man weaves? Yeah, there's a bunch of people that do man weaves. Maybe if you stick something in your hair and can't get it out and try to the whole thing, get a man style, you can get a go fund me. Maybe if you try man style, <laughs> study testicle what she did and do the same thing, Andre. Yeah, I'll put this testicle glue on my hair because I didn't run out of stuff. So I use the testicle glue. I put it on my hair, you know. <laughs> now, be careful. We did a few episodes back discuss uh, Cicely Tyson, what she did to Miles Davis with his man weave. Because she pulled out his oh, wow. man weave, Andre, when Cicely Tyson oh, yeah. uh, re- found out that Miles Davis was cheating on her. Well, not a weave. I wanted the wig. Because they got the, you know, the, the, the glue. You know, okay, this is the thing. Have you seen those man weaves, uh, Siobhan? No. I have not seen the it. man weaves. Wait, they oh, we got a show, too. We, we have <laughs> to. They look good. I want, the, I want the wave. They can you know, put, right? they, they put patches of hair on, like Andre. Picture Andre Ball. Mm-hmm. They glue hair to his scalp, which looks crazy. Yes. Then they shave it down. They can create finger waves. Oh, wow. They can give him twists. And it literally will look like Andre has yeah. hair. Oh, wow. It li- you, cannot you cannot tell. tell. They can do anything. They can give you a high top fade, the finger waves, the locks, the dreads. Oh, wow. And so what's happening now, and it changes your appearance. It will make Andre look like he's in his 20s because hair does that. So what's happening now is all of these men are going around with these man weaves, and we don't know what they look like George Jefferson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of women, they walk around with And weaves, that's what men are saying. Look like weezy. Men are saying, well, y'all do it. You don't, did you right, say look like right, Weezy? Right. Did you say we look like Weezy? Well, you right. said George Jefferson. Because <laughs> men are. I, I is it honest? Picture, Chris, you can put it there. She, saw, she sent a picture. So this is a discussion, because I feel like if a if I know that a man is bald and he look, cause I literally, Siobhan, you could be 50, get this man weave and look like you 30. Wow. That's how amazing yeah. it is. And so I'm going, but if I found out that you, okay, Kim, that's not a man <laughs> weave. That's you when you fell and your lip is busted up. What I was saying was <laughs> nobody <laughs> Oh my God. You. you look horrible. Oh my gosh, you look horrible. This is what I Try it now. Maybe they'll do a, you can do a GoFundMe now. I came over the hospital <laughs> and nobody <laughs> sent me nothing. <laughs> but no surgeon trying to fly me nowhere. Ain't nobody helped me. I did get a lot of followers. A lot of so followers. people don't know why your face looks like Kim's face, if you're listening to us. She she fell, did, she fell in a hole. She was at the what do you call it plant shop uh, nursery. nursery. She was at the nursery looking for some plants, and there was a hole in the in the ground at the nursery, and they didn't put those little cones around it. So Kim, you know she's distracted and got ADD. She wasn't looking down, and she stepped in the hole and tripped and fell and hit her head on the on the cement pavement, and she busted her nose. See my head right there, bam! She, bust, right there. she banged her head, and busted her nose, her, busted that open, busted her oh. lip open, and her. Mm-hmm. So this picture is her looking horrific, like she got beat up in the worst way. She didn't talk to me for mm. a week because I said she looked like a baboon booty. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> yeah. Is that what you it said to say her? That. You said she looked like a baboon. And I lost booty. work and everything. It yeah, like you my work. Head. I still got. And the she stuff. put the picture out on Instagram, and I was like, please take that down. <laughs> that's the most horrific picture I've ever seen. Put the pretty one up. Or could you put makeup on that horrific looking oh, face? Is, she had no sympathy from her friends. I don't think we got you anything, did no, we? No, nobody no. did nothing. Kim Coles did a gig for me. She covered me on one of my Oh, that's kids. right. She did that gig. <laughs> she was a ghost slide in. You verified. You didn't get, your, you didn't get 100,000 followers. <laughs> Then nobody fly you out to, around the corner. <laughs> around the corner, but no one reached out and let Siobhan ain't check it. You no, know, I, I think it's because people that already that knew you. you. Yeah. People they thought are, you went and got some bad They probably surgery. thought you had bad plastic <laughs> surgery. <laughs> oh, okay, you got to They probably thought you was trying to get both thought, They thought some people thought it was sexy. They was like, ooh, Kim. Because her lips were never that big. Yeah. You know, the old <laughs> but that lips. was ridiculous to be that damn big. But don't hate on Tessica. <laughs> she she got her look. You know, no, this is Tessica's 15 minutes. It's not like Tessica is going to be on the Real Housewives of New Orleans. It's you her know, 15 it's, minutes. it's her 15 minutes. She's got, you know, who gets chance the rapper to, you know, to, you common might ask her on a date if him and Tiffany don't last, you know, because <laughs> that's, that's the one woman common ain't conquered. So, you know, <laughs> he might take her out to dinner. Damn. I said it. Damn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, because con- common didn't conquer everybody in Hollywood. Um, but so. I did see you the man weave. Sorry. Yeah, so Chris, if you could put the man weave up. 
But but going back to it, Siobhan, how would you feel if you knew that the dude you were talking to, really his real look, if you found a picture, he looked like he was 56. And now he's got this man hair, man weave. How do you find out? Like if you see an old picture of him. Like What's that's wrong what he really I'm just saying, but he looks older. <laughs> like, okay, that's a man weave. Oh, now wow. you see the two pieces in the corner? That's what they did. Oh, wow. Now you can already tell he looks older. Look at his hair. Yeah. They well, did. Right here, if you met him right here, you'd be like, no. Yeah, see, no. <laughs> what about if you were going to marry him and didn't know until after you got exactly. married? Exactly. I would be I would be, that would be, I'd be so upset. That would be but, okay, okay. What's the difference in that and what women do with the You know I got that? a weave on. But some men, I mean, well, mama, okay, honestly, my, my dad, my dad never saw my mom without makeup and her hair together. Some uh, women don't tell men it's a weave. Some women, you know, now I think men are more aware. They put their hands in your hair. Yeah, women don't, know. women don't let you do that. Somebody said, I think it was earthquake or something. He said women with a weave in here feel like an Easter basket. I thought it was <laughs> funny. Oh my God. <laughs> but a lot of women don't tell men. It's the week, and and so another thing, the and if they do know, a lot of women will not let a man see what they look like. Right. Exactly. Oh, we do know without women their like wigs that. and without their weeds. Chris, yes, I got a weave. I'm telling you right now, Chris. <laughs> I got braids, and I got a weave. My real hair is about. Oh, but you have hair. About right. Yeah, you this do have well, hair. I guess my hair is. But you have hair. Kim. I do have hair, That's but I'm not I doing so it. I'm not wearing it. I don't want to comb it. But the thing about it is there's a lot of women that won't let their men see them the way. Because let me tell you, all of these women who got these weaves, Cardi B, everybody, Sherry Shepard, Kim, everybody, we look different without oh, long luscious different. hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. look different without the bob. We look I, Now, yeah. I'm not saying that anybody is ugly. No. We just look different. I put it this, I'm going to put it this way so you can understand. You ain't going to want to hit it. With the regular hair. No, I don't think that's no, true. No, I think it's gonna be a difference. One thing it just, depends on the guy. Gonna be like, I'm talking to Chris. <laughs> Chris is gonna be into the this Chris gonna be happy. I'm looking at right party. now. When I look at my brother, he ain't gonna be interested. Okay. Wait, has he met Kyle? I disagree with you. I as long as you don't see the brothers, it's good. But once you see them, like, oh, she looks just like a dude. And then you As long as you don't see them, the illusion is fun. I oh, think boy. a lot of women, you would be don't able to, to you would be able to. Y'all, go ahead, go ahead. Shabon. No, I just disagree with you. I think there's a lot of women who look fine. And there's a lot of women who wear their hair natural, which is like awesome. But I think that there's some women, you know, we just look different, you know, and a lot of women don't, they like the long, luscious hair. They just like it. It used to be a time we didn't let men know at all. So, I, you know, I don't know if women so much are now being dishonest because you know that we wear wigs, wigs and weaves. But why now. is it so hard to discuss? Because we've done it for so long. Like, you know, it's like you've seen us without our hair. Yeah. We do Instagram. I, I think with the, with the, with social media, we're more honest about what we look like without the hair. You do social media without your hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Let's see here. Let's be clear about that. Kim Whitley <laughs> <laughs> go through all my pages. You ain't gonna see that. Matter of fact, if you do see it, I'm suing you. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah, I don't do a lot, but I do on the weekends. I wear my natural hair. Um, I don't know. It, I would, I, you know, this man, we think I'm not feeling it. And right. I, because right. I don't, if you losing your hair, that's just, uh, just shave it. But what's the difference? Shave I mean, it. Don't have George Jefferson here with like, like that man, it's all bald. But don't you think that's hypocritical? A double standard? No. What about guys that wear makeup? You look, if you wear makeup, on TV because you're on TV and you put on makeup. Yeah. I'm not going to date you if you just wear makeup. I'm not, not going to date you if you be like, hey, girl, oh, okay, we about to get out. Can I borrow your compact? Yeah, I'm not. Boy, not, you better go that's, somewhere. That's if you want a different type of person. What? That's not what what if... <laughs> But if you wear a the man weave on TV because it's a certain, like, your right. headshot or whatever, and I don't have a problem with that. Right. But if you, you know, uh, just you, I, I, the, I, the dishonesty. For the character. You know, because I'm not being dishonest with you. Anybody I know, Kim gave me some advice one time. I said, Kim, because I wear these wigs, how, when do I take the wig off with the man? 
And she said, you, no, this is what Kim said. Watch she goes, the voice change. Because <laughs> I love going one. into Kim. Here we go. I love going into Kim. Kim goes, this when you let him know, a man know that you wearing a wig. When he said those three words, I love you. Then you take that wig off, you put it on your nightstand. And when you wake up, that wig right there. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Because then you know if he really does love you. But then you got him. Once they say, I love you. You say, whoo, I'm so glad you said that. I'm just trying to take this off. And you put that wig on over there. Because, honey, once they got it and they love you, they don't care. I think they care. Well, as long as you keep your hair up. But, long but I think it's nice. a dishonest. Like, you got to tell me this is not my hair. And then I'm going to go, well, babe, what does your hair look like? No, no, no. Don't say nothing to me. I don't want to hear this ain't my hair. You a man. I don't want crazy. if you say this ain't my hair, because why do you have to tell me? Because you're going to try to find out what if you in bed with him, you grip his head and it come off. What if it gets real hot and that glue in his Oh, and glue <laughs> slide off. The hair slide off. Oh my god. Black. The um, black. So I guess I would. I guess I would because I know men that have sprayed yeah. that topics. Y'all know that yes, black topic? Yes. I know men that have sprayed themselves a new hair, a new hairline with that black yeah. topic. And it's all on your Ooh. sheet. It's all on your skin. Okay, so so you all do yeah, you were doing the hair and stuff. Now. Do you do you do it for the man or do you do it for yourself? The hair? Well, we don't have a man, obviously. So So we do it for ourselves. We do it for ourselves. So well, I mean if you had a man. I look, when you had a man. No, I look worse when I'm with a man. When I'm single, I'm, I look my best. <laughs> wow. That's <Kim>. completely <laughs> as bad. Wow. That's <laughs> wow. When I'm once I got you, I go to shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a I'm a play the game till I get you. Once I got no, you. No, here's the thing. Like Siobhan has very thick and long hair. It's really pretty. Turn it your head so they can see your head. So they Siobhan. can see. Yeah, Siobhan has. Let me see other way. Turn the other way so they can see. Turn the other way. Yeah, because so they can see. Because no, you got a black shirt on and the ponytail is black. So oh. it's, hard, you, it's hard to see. But it's long. <laughs> She's got long oh, hair. But I'll, so yeah, she she got, sleep, we're going to cut this I'm off. I'm cutting that off. Oh, okay. I didn't know it was that <laughs> long. Yes. Good grief. I knew it was long. But Siobhan also is not an actress. She's not on TV all the time. Here's the thing. when you It, it damages, your hair. It damages your hair. When you get in at 8 o'clock, they, and let's say they're doing your own hair, mm-hmm. Siobhan's hair. They're going to put a bunch of gel on her edges mm-hmm. to slick it down. They're going to use a curling iron that at, it is at the maximum hot temperature because yeah. they need curling it yeah. quick. They're going to spray it with a lot of hairspray. Mm-hmm. Eventually, it is going to fall. But what about the 24-year-old who fall out. the cashier at Ralph's with the lace front? I mean, I mean, come on. Why? Why? Because you know why? She style. wants style. It's a style. She Everybody wants the wants style. Everybody. You okay, can't so achieve. maybe a guy wants a, a man weave. I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. Because they're really nice styles. I just, for Kim, she's like, she don't want to know. You got to tell me because I don't want it to come off. I don't know how that works. Um, Okay, I'm tired of talking about this subject. Okay, well, we got to move on because we are already an hour in, I think. Chris, baby, where where are we? (laughs) And I need to get to real. No, and I wanted to read some comments. uh, Just a hair over an hour. Wait, Wait, what'd you say, Chris? You're a hair over an hour. Okay, good. We, this is okay, because we mm-hmm. the other stuff we can talk about, uh, we can talk about, oh, let's talk about one thing. NeNe Leakes. Okay, real quick. NeNe Leakes uh, put out a few tweets. She is not coming back to Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, her team has dropped her agent, attorney, and manager. Now, NeNe also put out a tweet and said her team has not dropped her, but it has been reported that they have dropped her. NeNe says they have not, so... I guess we'll find out. But she had been putting out tweets saying that there was racist behavior behind the scenes on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Mm. And she asked people to boycott uh, watching the show. She named people that knew about the racist behavior. And um, so she would, and I know she was going through contract negotiations that didn't pan out. So she would not be returning to the show. So she is in a conundrum right now. That's a good word for it. Yes, yeah, it is. It's a big conundrum <laughs> because let's say I, I use the word. Let's say her team did let her go. Do you feel it will be hard for Nene to rebound from being let go 
from not being on Real Housewives of Atlanta because she was a she was at one point the highest paid star on Real Housewives of Atlanta. On any reality show, wasn't it? On all the reality shows. If you got Nene Leakes, yeah, yeah, she was very highly paid. Uh, she also, you know, she she also was on our show tour, the ladies and uh, what was our tour ladies called? We ain't been on it so long. Ladies Night Out. Ladies Night Out. Uh, Nene was the MC of our show. So this is a, yeah, she's in a, she's in a bit of a spot if her team let her go. Because in Hollywood, it's hard. Once your team lets you go, you, you can get blackballed. Yeah. The, 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 yeah, Siobhan, the bottom line is, and if you get blackballed in this business and being a black person and a black woman, sometimes it's hard to rebound from that. Yeah, we're going to see what happens because it affects everything. Other people, you know, it's going to affect her show. It affects... Her She's opening up a us. new a club in Atlanta yeah, called yeah. Lanethia. Here's the problem, and we hope that that Nene can rebound from this because we I, I like Nene. You like Nene. We mm -hmm. had a good time on our tour. Everything when you do a Real Housewives yeah. franchise and you have storylines, you can create from those storylines. You can create streams of revenue mm -hmm. and capitalize on those storylines, and then go on and do other stuff. And I'm gonna use Candy Burris as an example. Candy Burris has this entrepreneurial mind. Uh, one of the castmates who's no longer there, Phaedra Park, said she had a sex dungeon in her basement. Candy took that and made a, called The Dungeon, where it's like so profitable, she goes and women dress in lingerie and come see like a little erotica show, and she sells out in every city. She also created the Old Lady Gang restaurant. She's got two of them, which was a storyline. She has used her writing ability, because Candy wrote, um, she wrote No Scrubs for TLC. So now people know that she's a writer. Candy also has Candy Coated Nights, which is one of the biggest selling uh, um, adult. <clears throat> adult toy. You know, she's a billionaire. Well, I'm not going to say what Candy has, but she's got an empire going on. And it's also, it's from being on Real Housewives of Atlanta. From being on Real Housewives of Atlanta, Cynthia Bailey has an eyeglass line. She's got, I believe, purses. All she's got purses stuff. and backpacks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you, so basically, you're saying once you're in, you need to diversify, keep the funds. Absolutely. Because when it's over, it's over. It's a wrap. Yeah. So you need to be able to capitalize and have other streams. <laughs> right. So if this, you know, like Nene opening up this club, Lanethia, if you're not on Real Housewives and it's not a storyline, Tamar Braxton has her restaurant. Mm -hmm. If it's not a storyline, you don't have the visibility to get, get people right in this club right, all right. the time because they're not seeing it on Real Housewives. So you got to now contend with trying to get it out on social media. You got to try to get on all of, do the, the, you know, press about it. Mark but there's nothing, if you're going to go to sleep, get you got to get off the podcast, dude. Yeah, I, can't, I, take, I can't take Kim going to sleep and you going to sleep, Andre. The only thing sleep is this bright ass cheek. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No. I don't know about Nene. I don't watch reality TV. No, I don't care. Well, she got She's now. doing good. His eyes are always now. closed. He talked with his eyes closed. <laughs> He's 87. I'm mellow. Can I be mellow? Tell me more about Nene Lee. Yeah, that would be better <laughs> for all of us. Um, we're going to read Where's some the comments. comments. Let's, let's, so let's, we hope that, okay, we're going to stop. So we hope that Nene can rebound back. Yes. Because, you know, it, it, I think people love seeing her on The Housewives mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, so for some more opportunities. So we're, we're, we're wishing Nene Leakes well. Yes. Because we like Nene. Yes. So we are wishing her very well. Now, would you boycott Real no, Housewives? No. no. I think because it's a franchise. I mean, because there's other people I don't, people I don't that watch you like. it, but I'm not. Would, would you boycott it, Siobhan? No. No. Because Nene asked you. No. Why not? Because, I mean, that's her perception, her experience. Um, and I think there are two sides that may be a true story. But, I mean, I don't think you should just boycott something based off of someone else's perception and not your own experience. You know, okay. part of the cancel culture. I like that. Right on. Mm -hmm. Look at him. He's trying to get Okay, so <laughs> speaking of cancel culture, and we're going to end this. Chris Harrison from The Bachelor oh, yeah. has stepped down for a length of time. Do you know why? Because he said something. He said something that he that everybody construed as racist. Did you hear about this? But I Chris? thought he apologized and fixed it. Okay, it don't. Wasn't bad? Yes. So, so one what of, he said. I have the, not heard this. 
Okay. So Chris Harrison was on uh, talking to Rachel Lindsay, who was the Black Bachelorette, who married Brian Abasalo on The Bachelorette. He was talking to her, I think, on a podcast, and one of the former Bachelor contestants went to a fraternity uh, formal in 2018, and it was a reenaction of the Antebellum South counterpart. Okay. Which means they own slaves, Mm -hmm. the whole Antebellum South. So Chris Harrison didn't feel that it was racist. Rachel Lindsay said, that's racist. And he was like, it was in 2018. She was like, it was racist in 2018. And he said, look, Rachel, was it racist in 2018 or would it be racist in 2021? Because that's a big difference. But because he was giving her so much pushback and Rachel Lindsay said, it would be racist at any time. Because if I was at that party, who would I be? Your ass would be a slave. So Chris Harrison, because he was not apologetic and he was pushing back and he was defending the former contestant of The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, whatever, which one, people said, you're racist. So he put out an apology and said, my ignorance was racist. But why did he you quit the show? Because you He didn't quit the that. show. He's stepping down for a minute. Why? And because he says he's going to go get informed and That's educated. That's a lie. He's stepping down because he's been doing it for 20 years and he's sick of the bitches. He's sick of doing it. You don't leave no shit. He's sick of it. He want to probably go do Survivor or Naked in a Parade. He's tired of it. He's tired of all these women and all He's that. He's sick of it. Well, Just... Rachel Lindsay now says she don't know whether to accept the apology because she feels it's not really authentic. She says she's not going to renew her contract with mm-hmm. Warner Brothers because she's just tired of all this. She had to threaten to leave the Warner Brothers fold if they didn't bring in a black bachelor which they did because she had threatened to leave. Um, She said, I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of all of the racist stuff and I'm tired of dealing with it. So he is going to, now when I read his apology, I thought it had all of the right words. I thought he said all of the right things because you know, when you get in trouble for racist stuff, you always got to say, I'm going to go get more informed. I'm going to go get educated and try to find a deeper level of understanding. I'm a, you know, that's why when you said, I'm, I work as hard as a slave, Chris was like, please don't go there. Don't say it. Chris, Chris is like, I'm not putting, I don't want to put out no apology. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him laugh. He like, exactly. So, wait, 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 wait. so I on. didn't know if his uh, apology was authentic either. I didn't know whether, I didn't know. What are you looking at? Well, uh, uh, we have some information that we got. Oh, is it like breaking news? Breaking news. Breaking news on the Two Funny Mamas podcast. Breaking news. Okay. Yeah, uh, Those were the three. We issues. do have, uh, we got to finish this. We're going to knock this down. But we so, so last week, last week, Kim, yeah. 40th episode, killer show, hilarious. We did the bonus episode for Valentine's Day. We yeah. promised, we promised that if people let us know in the comments how they got into the show, what they were all about. And as long as we got over and 40. Yeah, you got something, Chris? As long as we got over forty thousand subscriptions, that we would give away a prize. I uh, we did. We have. You can pick a winner. I sent. Uh, I sent one as well. If you want to check that out, maybe you guys can pick right on the spot. Uh, okay. Right, you mean the one that says, "D Brand Day One." I'm a full time single dad, and I have loved Kim and Sherry from day one. Back to the View and Friday. Love them both. I've been working from home since March, and they've been like family to me. So oh. that's a that's an entry or uh, Sherry. What else do you okay, have? Okay, that's cool. Look okay, Sherry, Sherry's like that's cool. So are we supposed to send him a book? Yep, autograph well, book. He won our book. Both books. Uh, you got Sherry's book, Kim's book, autographed. We're gonna send that out and thank you so much to everybody for commenting and name? being part Me of it. O fourteen. Please email us at two funny mamas at, at gmail dot com to okay. collect your prize. And thank you so much for look for. Okay, are you checking your phone, Andre? If you gonna go to sleep no, and check out. your phone, and you eat. gotta get and eat. You gotta get off the podcast. This is what we was talking about. Oh, so you don't have no man. This what you trying to about. bring up? What you bring up? Someone sent me something special too. Say, Andre, I like your lips. You look good on the two funny mamas. I'm about to say my ass too. <laughs> He just turned into Sanford and Son. He don't get mad. He don't get mad. He walked out into Fred. He showed he was Fred Sanford. Okay, damn.
Okay, so we almost fell out the chair if you wonder what that noise was, <laughs> listeners. Andre is sharing a chair with me. He done broke Kim's chair. So do you want to send them a copy of your book, Andre? Is that what you're saying? No. No. Okay. I'm right. we got to let them. it be known some people like me too. Uh, they okay. do like you. They love Chris and they love Andre. You got to put it out there. This I is love a, you too, Chris. Okay. All right. Thanks, All right. Here we go. It says hello. This is just, a black just sexology. one kiss into the one kiss into the camera. Just one, just one no, kiss. Into the camera. Okay, all right. What'd you say, Chris? You what? nasty, you nasty. Stop. I, I said okay, one kiss, go. one kiss into the camera. No, all right. Do, okay. What? <laughs> Andre kissed the camera. Oh gosh. And that's all you need, Chris. You got it. You got to specify who, man. <laughs> that's the kiss, Chris. Now you can care for what you wish for. Go to bed we, dreaming about that. <laughs> we could we could heat up we could heat a whole block with the heat the, the if we were the man, yeah, that's that's not gonna no, work. Right. That's, I'm blushing. Thank you, Andre. Okay. Now I want to do a shout out. This is a black sexologist social worker shout out. It says, hello, two funny mamas. As a mental health and sexuality professional, I just want to say that I truly appreciate how you both consistently embrace your authenticity and honesty in your shows. I've been a fan of both of you for years, and I found your work to be both relatable and grounding for me, especially as I continue to navigate professional spaces where I get side looks from being me, honest and unapologetically black. While I balance my career as a professor, mental health counselor, and diversity and inclusion trainer. Wow. Um, I really like how black comics are continuously authentic and astute in calling out shit for what it is. I think that's important for our resilience. There's a concept in therapy called radical acceptance, and it has been a critical part of helping clients and myself over the past year. Acceptance in this case does not mean everything in the world is okay. It's the opposite. Things are not okay. And it's better in the long run to acknowledge it up front than to deny the reality that is in front of us. Still, that acceptance is the first step in handling and moving forward. And you, I guess we incorporate humor in this accepting and into the acceptance. Let me see. Anyways, I just want to shout out to you uh, Kim and Sherry for being the smart, sexy, and funny badasses you are and for giving us relief and joy during these blippy blip times. This is from Patricia, a child-free, unmarried, smart woman in her 30s who proudly takes up space with grace. Okay. That's, that's okay. the jam. And as somebody else says, Aurelia says, I love your friendship, humor, motherhood, sassiness. Um, somebody else says, Sherry, I love how positive you are. And always how you compliment Kim, that love and support you show her is wonderful. You wrote that I, yourself, I, didn't you? <laughs> you know, that's how she supports me. It says, Kim, you are the crazier part of me. And I love how you just say whatever's on your mind. And it's crazy funny. I just suffered a miscarriage. I didn't know I was pregnant. So many thoughts and feelings going on in my head. Then I got the two funny mamas notification. You ladies made my day. I have watched every episode since Mother's Day 2020 which was when we started. You ladies have been funny and a blessing. I love Chris and his little fling with Kim. Huh, all right. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for the laughs. My prayer is for this podcast to grow and keep growing for you to get a, a TV show. So, and this is from... They have five. They have five each. You said your name wrong, ma'am. Nathabalang Grace. Nathabalang? Grace. We love you and we're so sorry we said your name wrong, but thank you so much. All the way from South Africa. This one says, it, this podcast reminds me of when I was young and my mom and all her girlfriends would be hanging out in the kitchen and the stuff they would be saying and I would be cracking up when they thought I was in the room. That's also how I remember Ronaldo Ray. Um, when my mama was at work, she was a school teacher. I would pull out Ronaldo's album. You remember Ronaldo? Yeah, of course. Ronaldo you Ray. Oh, I didn't know that. You know? It says, that's who, and she says, and I would laugh and, and all about all the stuff they talked about. That's who Kim and Sherry remind me of, memories. So that's, um. oh, I wanted to let you know that I've not laughed so hard in 10 years since my husband passed. I've been telling people to watch you guys. I also sent over 100 Facebook posts to friends that I have grown up with and known since I was a little girl. Thank you for giving the world your gift of laughter. 
your platform is not for everyone. Well, damn, girl. Um, <laughs> please give your attention to the positive people. The uh, God gave you the gift to make us laugh. Stick to that because you could lose people who truly need your laughter. And that's from Gwendolyn Crutcher. Gwendolyn, we're going to give you a two foot, uh, uh, my book, Permission Slips. Um, every guy to giving yourself a break, every woman's guy to giving yourself a break, and the, Kim's book. Too funny, mom. Did you? You didn't even say. Did you see Kim sleep? Did you see Kim sleep? Mm -hmm. And we're gonna give you a copy of Kim's book, The Delusion of Cinderella. So email. I was thinking of. I was listening to what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> no, if we t it's time to end this podcast because you was knocked out I was between not Andre sleeping no. and you. I sleeping. was not asleep. We can roll the tape back. I'm no, we can not roll the tape back. I'm looking at this. I was like, please, Lord, don't let her read another one of these. <laughs> <laughs> comments. You was knocked out. I was not. If I was knocked out, I'd be like this. <laughs> My mouth open. Gwendolyn Crutcher, email me at g uh, two funny mamas at gmail dot com. That's right. With your address, the delusion of Cinderella, and permission slips. Every woman's got to give yourself a break. This has been so much fun. We had this was our right. gang member episode. <laughs> gang member. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and please watch Daily Pop every weekday at weekdays. <laughs> <laughs> You are, are tired. Delirious. 11 a.m. on the E channel. Why are you rocking? They can see You know you. what? If you watch me on Daily Pop, I was like, I need somebody to put a rock on me. I do this. I'll be like this. <laughs> yeah. My, bro my brother Scott rocks. I was like, something is wrong with us. With this family. <laughs> yes, we rock. And I was rocking on Maybe TV. Maybe it was when your mama slapped you this way, slapped you that way, slapped you this way. <laughs> Uh, she's on Daily Pop every day. Check your local listings for time. I'm on Dish Nation every day. Uh, Andre would love a cuddle buddy. Yep. But Chris, yes. it, I sit in the tub every day. At three That's <laughs> Siobhan is happy with Jesus Christ with her celibacy. <laughs> well, you know, I'm open, Sherry. Oh, 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 well, that's going to be another episode. <laughs> Sometimes it just about that self love. <laughs> mm. Okay, I love myself. Oh, a little yeah, too much. You know what? This okay. is probably for another episode. Everybody Ain't nobody. Joshua been go. We is anybody checked on Joshua? I know he's so <laughs> quiet. He's in the house somewhere he by is himself. So quiet. He called the Uber and left. I know. <laughs> Joshua is gone. He said, "I didn't took my mom he out to dinner. I'm a pimp." He is gone. He is gone. Right. Since since, since you guys are talking about it so much, oh, go ahead, Kim. Excuse me. No, no worries. No, this you better talk. She ain't gonna let you talk. Me neither. So go on. Say what you, you guys are say. talking about this self love. Remember whenever you had Dr. Michelle on, you know, from UCLA and Johns Hopkins, yeah. and then you, you talked about, and yeah, you I talked about, <laughs> and you talked about self love for ninety percent of the conversation. That was. I just wanted to just acknowledge Dr. the great, Michelle the greatness. Self love is good because yes. here's the thing, Siobhan, because you've been celibate is the longest. The I don't know if y'all speaking in tongues or it's she's pig speaking. Latin. That's her pig Latin. Oh she always got a pretty bad suit about her. I've never her pig Latin is from New Orleans or something. That's a weird pig Latin. Remember Ubby Dubby from Zoom? How about for Evans? Oh, what? what? Happy Debbie from Zoom. No, no. Come on in Zoom, 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 Zoom. Come on, Zoom, 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 Zoom,
Oh, thank you. You know, we got to end this podcast. So you're saying that's why your hair is so great? Oh, yeah. oh, 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 I think that was, we I think that was implied. We're going to have you on for a whole separate podcast. We're going to talk about this without random, random, random nasty comments random. flying at the screen. Just flying at the screen. Don't make no daggone sense. That's why your hair turned gray. And then he sounds so like old. So guys, this has been so amazing. Yes. Uh, this podcast, our post Valentine's podcast. I'm going to see you tomorrow at my Valentine's Day brunch, right, Kim? Yeah. I'm having a social distancing brunch, Chris, with uh, six or seven women. Everybody's been tested. I'm having shrimp and grits, eggs and bacon, chicken and waffles, uh, garlic noodles, uh, buffalo rolls, potato hash browns. Um, I'm having a bunch of other stuff, uh, sweet potato pies, pound cake, cheesecake, mimosas, St. Germain's, um, liqueur, and I can, and there's a, a few other things that, that I'm having. So Valentine's Day is officially just a woman's day? Well, now? it's mostly for the woman, yeah. So okay. this is for single women. No people can come who are married who have uh, booze. And we're going to have a really good time. So oh. I'm going to see you tomorrow, right? You'll see me tomorrow okay. for a little bit. No, oh, jeez Louise. You got a date? I'm going to call you, Chris. We're going to have a oh. Valentine's Day. Guy day. Yeah, so she said, she said that little kissy poo. I'm keeping hope alive for tomorrow. I'm yes, like, we're all keeping hope alive. So you guys, ha- well, you can't say every Valentine's Day because you're not going to say it. Because already. And had we got a special, we, our special episode would have aired. So anyway, we're just going to say good night. Siobhan, thank you for being our special guest. Yeah, well, thank you Anytime for having out sharing with the us. show. We had a great time with this you. You have to join us again. Andre, thank you. He didn't just left. Andre he just walked off. Left the, his food. I know. His, Andre, come get your plate. He walks off of a live podcast. Andre just Ooh. walks off last stuff, mm-hmm. falling asleep. So we want to thank you. To get any Two Funny Mamas merchandise, go to buyjack.com slash Two Funny Mamas. Please tell your friends and family to subscribe. We're over 40,000 subscribers. Thank you since Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. Our goal is 100,000. We're going to manifest it. Yes. And uh, we're doing good. So I don't know how we yeah. end this. So we're going to just say good night and take good care night. of yourself and be safe. Take care of yourself and be safe. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas.